you're looking to make decent coffee at home, your first step is usually to buy a decent burr grinder. Now there are many options out there, but you're rather limited at the budget that most people have, which is usually around £100 or less, to a hand grinder. Now hand grinders are fine, but they're very labour intensive, if, especially if you're making more than one cup of coffee, or if you're using a particularly light roast or dense bean. The amount of effort can leave you puffing and panting, and it's all a bit of a nightmare really. However, there is an option now, an electric grinder at the £100 price point that looks like it's going to be pretty good, and that is the Wilfer Svart Grinder. Now, I've seen this in specialty coffee shops for sale and some specialty roaster websites, and I heard some good things about it. It's partially designed by Tim Wundlebow, who was World Barista Champion in 2004. It's a hugely influential figure in specialty coffee. It comes in around the £100 mark. If you're lucky, you can squeeze it under 100 quid if you shop around. 120 if you're not so lucky, but it's still a pretty good spec for the money by the look of it. Now, I'm going to run through the main features of it today. We're going to have a look at what it does well, what it doesn't do quite so well, and we're going to compare it to our £2,500 EK43 over there. Now, that might not seem like a very fair comparison, and I can't imagine there are many people out there who are thinking of buying either a Wolf or Swart grinder or an EK43. There's like £2,400 worth of difference between them. But I always think the EK is the benchmark for grinding quality. So I'm going to taste coffee brewed with the Aeros Press and ground on this, and I'm going to taste the same coffee brewed on the Aeros Press and ground on the EK43. And we're going to see what that extra £2,400 gains you. Now, look at the grinder itself. It's a fairly compact little device. It's relatively weighty. You're not going to knock it over too easily. Top comes off and you put the beans in there. They're dispensed into this little plastic device down here. There's an on-off switch, there's a grind switch and there's a timer. So you can let it run when you're away from the grinder. You could probably grind some in the morning beforehand, but I'd, I'd always advise grinding on demand as you would with any grinder. So the, the actual grind level in terms of fineness is adjusted by turning the hopper effectively. And it's kind of steps. So there's a few little steps there. You can just about feel them. There's 32 steps in total. And on the outside here, you've got a little guide to different types of brew methods. So you've got at the coarsest one, you've got steep methods. So things like cold brew and that type of thing. Then you've got French press, cafetiere, and then filter coffee. So probably pour overs. And then you've got aero press up near the fine finest level of grinding and then going fully on you've got the trusty mocha pot which is your finest grind. Now you may think there's something missing here and you'd be right and that is espresso. Now the manufacturers say that this isn't suitable for espresso. It doesn't grind fine enough because espresso requires a very fine grind because it's under pressure and it's a very quick extraction. You need a very fine grind. Also you need a bit more control that a grinder with 32 steps to go from very fine to very coarse is going to provide you to enable you to use different beans. Now, that's not going to stop us because I'm going to see later on whether we can brew a decent tasting espresso with this grinder. Who knows, maybe we will. Looking at the burrs themselves, they're 40 millimeter conical burrs. Now, conical burrs aren't found on that many commercial grinders these days. They're very, very popular years ago on things like the Mazzaconi, Mazzaroba, that type of thing, because they are quite quick and they don't necessarily heat up as much as flat burr grinders do. The downside is that they tend to produce a greater variety of particle sizes. And since the EK became popular with its big flat burrs, conicals have kind of fallen out of favour a bit. But you do find them a lot in lower end machines. That doesn't mean they're going to produce a bad coffee. It just means you're going to get a bit more substance in your coffee. So you're going to get more fines. It's going to be a thicker, sort of denser coffee in a way. And if you're making espresso with it, if you could, you'd expect to have a bit less clarity with the coffee because those fines, those very fine particles, very small particles, are going to get into your cup. 
they're going to slow down extraction, they're going to make it taste slightly different from a very clean tasting flat burr grinder. But conical burrs are quite quick and as I said they don't heat up so quickly. So even though they're 40 mils, which is quite small when you consider that the ones in an EK43 are over 80 mils, this isn't designed to grind again and again and again like you would in a shop. It's designed for home use where you might grind once or twice in a 10 minute period, maybe a little bit more. It's just not going to have any real problems with the coffee getting too hot in there. It's got a fairly slow RPM motor, again that's quite good. There's a slightly more expensive version of this which is about £20 more called the Aroma which has a slightly lower RPM motor. I don't know if that's really worth the uh, increase in outage that you'd have to pay for it but you can make up your own mind about that. The burrs are replaceable, they cost about £40 from what I've seen from the Walker website. You may be able to get them slightly cheaper elsewhere. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dose out a 15 gram dose of a Bella Vista coffee from Gardelli. It's an omni roasted coffee. It needs quite a fine grind to extract it well on an AeroPress. I'm going to make it as an AeroPress, I'm going to have a little try of it and I'm going to make the same coffee on the EK43 and we're going to see what they taste like. So I'm using a 15 gram dose here to 210 grams of water which isn't exactly what I do with the EK but it's what tends to work on lower spec grinders because you need to grind a bit more coffee to get the flavour to fully extract whereas the EK you can grind a little bit less because the extraction is more even. So let's see how it goes. Put the lid on, we press the grind button It's not quick, but it's not terrible. And it's noisy, but it's not amazingly noisy. Now, one thing about this, rounds wise, they look pretty decent actually, but this isn't the best mechanism for getting coffee out of the grinder really. It tends to kind of clump a bit and you get a bit of static and it's not terribly user friendly. There's a bit of coffee in there and it's probably quite difficult to clean once you finish with it. But actually that wasn't too bad. Now I'm going to add my water. I'm going to let it brew for around a minute and a quarter. And then I'm going to do 30 seconds of pressure. And that should give us a, a decent AeroPress. I've made two AeroPresses, one with the wheel for grinder right in the middle of its AeroPress setting in terms of fineness and I've made this one here on the UK43 at two and a half which is my typical setting for an AeroPress. Fairly fine actually and the grind level looked pretty similar between the two to the naked eye. There wasn't a lot of difference. It's not like this was massively coarser. You couldn't see massive boulders in this one or lots of little finds. It looked pretty similar to the naked eye. I'm sure if you got them under some kind of mass spectrometer you'd be able to see the differences quite clearly in terms of the grind evenness. But to the naked eye there wasn't a lot of difference. Right let's try the Wilfer one first. Okay so actually that's surprisingly good. I'd say it's a lot better than my hand grinder that I use for home use which is a little Harry Skirton one. It's got quite a lot of clean flavours through there. This is sort of a natural, semi-natural coffee from Guatemala, but it's not one of those really funky naturals. It's one that's got a lot of clean, fruity, citrus flavours in it. So let's have another taste. Okay. That is actually pretty good. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily know that that had been made on a 100 quid grinder if I had that in a shop or somewhere like that. I wouldn't be unhappy with that coffee. There's a little bit of clarity lacking. It's a touch weightier, like 
than I'd expect. But let's see what the UK one tastes like to see if that's markedly different. Okay, so there's more kind of distinctiveness to the flavours. They're more sort of upfront. These are a little bit muted, which is, I think I've said before, in reviews rather grinders compared to the UK. The UK is a very clean, sort of high definition sort of flavour. There's a lot of other grinders. They're a little bit murky, a bit like watching in kind of 720 or like an old TV or something like that. Let's try again. Yes, there's like peachy, fruity and citrusy flavours. They're really clearly delineated, really clearly defined. They're a little bit murkier when you compare them to the Wilfer. But the difference is not massive. You know, you wouldn't think that this was 24 times more expensive than this. It doesn't give that much of an advantage. Yes, it tastes a bit better on the EK. There's definitely a, a difference you could taste if you're tasting it blind. Don't think it's just confirmation bias, but that actually makes a pretty nice aero press. Now let's have a look at it and see if we can make it brew an espresso. So I'm gonna go for the finest setting, which is a mocha on here and I'm going to run 18 grams of coffee in. Now this is a coffee that does need a pretty fine grind to get the most of it. So I'm not 100% certain that this is going to uh, this is going to work. But we will see. Now the problem we're going to have here is actually making this coffee go into the porter filter because this contraption is really not designed for getting coffee into a porter filter in any way. But we will uh, we will we will try our best. So I've brewed an espresso. <laughs> I ground it on the finest setting and we've got a really quite a weird looking coffee here. They weren't lying when they said it doesn't go fine enough for espresso. The shot was coming out very, very quickly. Even on the finest setting, it was nowhere near your traditional espresso shot. So nowhere near getting a two to one ratio in like 25 to 30 seconds. That just wasn't going to happen. So what I thought I'd try instead was to make a sort of longer coffee with a very quick extraction, which can sometimes work. Putting a lot of water through a slightly coarser ground coffee and using a three to one ratio can sometimes make a, a sort of somewhere between an espresso and a lungo that tastes actually all right. But it did come out very quickly. I put 18 grams in, I got 56 out in like about 11 seconds. So I've got a weird looking coffee here. It's kind of not very crema heavy even though it's a very fresh coffee it's only roasted about a week ago and it hasn't been opened it looks like a weird sort of crust in a filter and a and an espresso i suspect it's going to taste hugely under extracted i may be wrong but let's see what the results are Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can't make espresso with this grinder. Okay, now <laughs> that's not necessarily a bad point because when you're making coffee at home, you don't necessarily want to be messing about with espresso machines. You don't want to be messing about dialing in the coffee all the time. Most people at, at home want to be doing something that's fairly straightforward and simple like a V60 or an Aeropress or maybe a Chemex 
some sort of pour over where you're not constantly adjusting the variables and for most people it's not going to matter that this can't do espresso and it definitely can't do espresso i don't think there's any way you're going to get an espresso out of this there's no hack that's going to make this work you're not going to be able to tamp in a funny way you're not going to be able to overload a portafilter basket and still get something out you're not going to be able to run even a lungo uh, with like a four to one ratio i don't think that's even going to work because that is like the most acidic thing I've ever tasted. It's really not <laughs> very nice at all. So you're not gonna be able to make espresso from it, but we kind of knew that anyway. Overall, I think it's actually a great little grinder. There are a few little quirks to it. I mean, this, as I said before, this thing is not brilliant. It's not great to clean. It's not great for getting the coffee out, but it locks in place nicely. The timer works quite well. It's not too noisy. It's got a small footprint, Norwegian design. It looks pretty nice for a grinder. It doesn't look hideous as far as they go. Operation's pretty good and you don't need more than 32 steps in this range of grinding when you're not doing espresso. So I'd say, to be honest, this is the best grinder I've tasted around this kind of level. I think it's produced the best tasting coffee at around this level. And it's so much easier than a hand grinder. I think I, I definitely recommend it. Let me have your thoughts. Do you have any other grinders that you think are as good as this at the same level of money? Are there any grinders that you think are better than this and that are cheaper? Let us know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.